Uh, let me start by thanking all the speakers and panelists for the great contributions and also all the participants for very stimulating and an intense debate, but also very civilized. So thank you. Many things have been said. So I would like to share with you five reflections, five points that I have elaborated listening all of you, including Chantal, who provided very, very good input. Uh, first reflection, I would like to start with the big picture. Let's remember that the climate and biodiversity crisis, and you can include here the current pandemic, are not different crises. They are just different phases, different consequences of the same fundamental problem, our economic system, a linear fossil-based economy that is addicted to fossil resources and to growth at all costs, that has basically failed to value nature. And one of the reasons that it has failed to value nature, Chantal has just mentioned, is because the way we measure our economy through GDP. And the challenge has been that when the measure becomes a target, it's not any longer a good measure. And this is what has happened with GDP. So it is quite clear that in the next two decades, we need to put forward probably the greatest economic transformation in human history. If you look at the speed and scale of change that we need to put forward to achieve a climate neutral and nature positive economy. And of course, this transformation also requires simultaneously as one of the first steps to measure our economy in a different way, to measure what really matters, eh? well-being, health, nature, biodiversity, because at the very end, we need a new economy where life and not consumption becomes its true engine and its true purpose. Yeah? This brings me to my second reflection. So we are in an era of transformation and we need to look at our forests within this transformative context. I say this because still many people, many policymakers, many sectors look at our forests as a tool to compensate for a broken economic system a linear fossil-based economy. While I see our forests as probably the best tool we have to transform our economic system. So my second reflection is, let's look at our forests with circular bioeconomy lenses and not with linear fossil economy lenses, and we will see them as transformative tools, not as tools to compensate for the broken system, eh? to compensate for emissions so that we can continue or, or it can take longer this transformation that is urgently needed. My third reflection goes towards the following. In order to unlock the transformational potential of our forests, we need first to understand and realize that forests are complex long-term systems. Many of you have emphasized that. So, and this is a challenge because policymaking operates in very short cycles, relatively short cycles compared to how we should look at our forests, long-term complex systems. So the only good short-term approach regarding forest and forestry is the long-term approach. And this is crucial to understand. And I will put you an example that has been already mentioned by several of you. If you look at the last five decades in Europe, Europe as a continent has managed, and this is very remarkable, to simultaneously increase the forest surface the forest growing stock, the forest carbon sink, and the wood that we harvest from our forest. Or all that by also expanding the extent of forest protected areas. This explains that European forest, EU forests, which represent only 4% of the world forest, are responsible for more than 40% of the world's forest export product values, forest products export value. So that you can contextualize this figure, Russia hosts more than 20% of the world forest, but the Russian forest sector is responsible for about 4% of the world's forest products export value. If you look also at the sink, Russian forest, 20% of the world forest, have a sink that is two, three times larger than the EU, while Russian forests are more than five times the extension of the EU forest. Why I am making this reflection? Because if you look at the long term in the case of Europe, you can see yeah, that increasing a carbon sink 
can be in, syn in synergy with increasing harvesting of having an economic, reliable and viable sector. The challenge we are facing, and this is why the polarization is increasing, is that if you look at the short term, you will see harvesting and things as a trade-off. Well, if you look at, if you change the perspective and you look at the long term, harvesting and sink can be synergistic. Eh? So this is the point, and this is why it's so important that we look at foresting the long term. And the same will go for bioeconomy and biodiversity in the broad sense. If you look at the short term, you will only accentuate the polarization because you will see them as a trade-off. If you look in the long term, the change, uh, the, the figure is different. And this brings me to my fourth reflection, which is about the future. Uh, the decade that starts, we are going to see an unprecedented forest situation, not only in Europe, but in many other parts of the world. And this uh, unprecedented situation is explained by two main, not only, but two main structural changes. The first one is climate change. The impacts of climate change and natural disturbances is going to be unprecedented in many of European forests. We are already seeing that for a few years. Eh? The second the structural change is that the forest-based sector is going to face also on forestry, including here, unprecedented opportunities related to its potential to deliver renewable, low-carbon solutions to replace many of the fossil products in many sectors that will need to become climate neutral and circular in the next two decades. So the key to the questions, the main challenge, in my opinion, for policymakers and scientists is to use the emerging economic traction of all these new opportunities that are coming in order to finance and implement the adaptation measures, biodiversity measures that our forests need to stay resilient to climate change. This is the key. And to do that, we need integrative approaches. Yeah? We need to overcome the current polarization. The forest sector, forest industry, forest companies need to realize that investing in biodiversity is the priority number one if they want a resilient long-term business. So it's on their own interest. But at the same time, we need to realize that enhancing biodiversity in the long term requires a dynamic forest sector because we will need investments, philanthropy, NGOs, even public funding is not enough to enhance biodiversity here. Forest owners need to take the lead, forest companies, the sector itself. So we need the right incentives to stimulate that. And I don't, I don't think that there is any other, any forest owner, any forest company that doesn't want to increase biodiversity in the future. Yeah? Again, we need to look at things in the very long term because we are talking about long-term uh, forest systems. And so my fourth reflection is integrative approaches to overcome the dichotomy between bioeconomy and biodiversity because basically they are two sides of the same coin. And this brings me to my fifth reflection, five, fifth point. Yes, forests are complex systems, but we should not make them complicated. It's not the same complexity as making things complicated. So they are complex systems, but we need to avoid making them complicated. And to avoid making them complicated, we need a transparent, open science policy practice in dialogue. It is clear that the current EU forest strategy has not been the result of an open and structured science policy debate. This is clear, but okay, we can still put it forward for the future implementation of the new strategy. And here I would like to say that EFI, which consists of more than 120 member organizations, including leading universities and research institutions in Europe, but also consists of 29 European countries. So we are de facto the largest science policy platform in the world, is available to collaborate with any actor that wants a constructive, constructive dialogue on the future of, of a European forest. I am very happy that Forest Europe process has already asked EFI to play a crucial role. So we will be there for Forest Europe, which is a pan-European uh, process, as you know. I hope that in the future, also other European actors will see in EFI a, a solid partner to move forward the European forest strategy. So thank you again for, for participating in this event. And it has been a pleasure to organize this with IUCN.